Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. I'm David Fiorazzo, filling in for the good doctor this week. And joining me is none other than the counterculture mom, Tina Griffin. Hi, Tina. Hey, how you doing? Great. Uh, we've got some crazy stories to look at and a lot to get to. So let's hit that share button, everybody, and uh, let's get educated. Today, let's start with an unusual comment from a New Hampshire professor who claims that people shouldn't assume that all adults who sleep with children are dangerous pedophiles because sometimes it's the kid's fault. Also, if young people are initiating sexual activities with adults, or enthusiastically involved. We can't be effective in working with them if we assume that all such relationships start with a predatory or criminally inclined, inclined adult. The, as, as we see in the discussion, young people bridle at being forced into this uh, box of being seen as being the victim of a predator. So, Tina, I'm sure you read this article, too, in addition to what he said there. It's pretty frightening, some of the things he's saying. Uh, from what I understand, this is not a bad guy. He's not um, advocating for pedophilia or adult-child relationships, but he's putting a little bit of emphasis on, oh, every children are sometimes responsible for approaching, and, and then there's the word voluntary, which is very interesting. Your thoughts on what you've heard so far? I want to adopt every child in America. That's, that's where my heart is at the moment. Here's the issue. If kids are wanting to engage in sex, regardless how old the other person is, but it is even more horrific when it's involving an adult, but across the board, where are they coming up with the idea that they have to be sexually active at 12, 13, even younger than that? I heard of a recent case where an 11-year-old got pregnant. It breaks my heart. And David, you and I both know we've both been on the streets of America trying to save it for the last 20, 30 years. Our kids are being bombarded with the graphic sex ed in schools that are promoting it because we have a major pipeline of Planned Parenthood and our public school education. And on the yeah. other side, we got Hollywood that's being ruled and reigned by the enemy who wants sex to happen with every child, if possible, just because it wrecks what God wants for their lives. So we have to dig in deep on why our kids are thinking they have to be sexually active to begin with. Yeah, there's so much bombarding children and young people today. But this uh, professor, his name is David Finkelhor, or Finkelor. He's uh, with the University of New Hampshire, and he's the director of the Crimes Against Children Research Center. And um, interesting, uh, his solution apparently for prevention is comprehensive sex education. Um, the solution, really, uh, uh, Tina, the, we've seen kids destroyed. And we're talking not just, you know, public school kids, Christians, uh, Christian kids are influenced by this as well. What do you think? I absolutely agree. In fact, it's crazy the timing on this. I do a weekly program called the Counterculture Mom Show right here on Freedom Project Media. Check it out if you haven't. But this week we talk about the value of virginity. When we had abstinence education actually taught in schools 20, 30 years ago, the studies prove much less children, teens, and even young adults are engaging in sex out of wedlock, which I believe sex should be engaged with your opposite sex partner after you exchange the vows, just, just where I'm at. And it's not because God wants us to have a less fulfilling life and no fun. It's the exact opposite. He wants to protect us. That's what we need back in America. So 20, 30 years ago when I was going through sex ed, they had stick figures in sixth grade. It lasted about two or three weeks. We all felt uncomfortable <laughs> as 11, 12-year-old kids having the stick figures even. And now today it's so graphic. And what happened as a result? skyrocketing rates of the number of sexual partners with CSE, the number of sexually transmitted infections, the number of kids at a younger age engaging in sex, and what happens as a result of that? Suicide, depression, children having babies, 
abortion with Planned Parenthood, but it's all a contrived plot. So this is purposely done, which I know you know full well aware of that. We have to protect our kids at all costs. That's right. That's right. And if we're going along with the culture and the school system and those who are saying, Kids are going to be promiscuous anyway. They're going to experiment. Just give them whatever they need so that they can experiment safely. I'm going, geez, do they even understand the logical progression? Either they're going to have a possibly get a sexually transmitted disease or young girls are going to get pregnant or uh, kids are going to be confused about gender. Do they even understand what they're saying when they're saying, yeah, well, they're going to do it anyway, but let's try to make it a safe way. This guy probably has good intentions, but anything that would lean, that would steer you back to the radical, hypersexualized indoctrination in the public school system is absolutely the wrong move. And Christian parents, my goodness, we're hearing more and more stories about things that would say, "All right, it's time to get your kids out of school, if, if out of the public schools, if you haven't yet." Tina, I think we just have a few minutes left. Your thoughts? Yes, you know what? It brings me back to my years in Hollywood, where I ran for Miss America for Miss LA County. It was my first pageant. I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin. You know that full well. Went out to Hollywood. And I didn't even know how to walk in high heels. But I did know how to answer questions about the lack of absence education. And this went back 20 years ago when I ran for Miss LA County. Came in second place. And the question I was asked out of the 30 or 40 other women that went for um, Miss LA County, they got questions. When did you start singing? When did you start playing the piano? You know, what do you want to do with your life to dream big? What was mine? Here's my question. Mine was absolutely the hardest. Do you think condoms should be available in high school and middle schools around the country? I was like, okay, this is a really tough question. My answer to this day is always going to be the same thing. I think absence education should be number one. I think our kids need to strive for the best, know that it is possible. I waited till I was uh, married, not to give too much details there. It was a very short reception, and my husband's like, let's get out of here. <laughs> but I was a week from 30 years old, David, a week from 30. It is possible, and I even did all this stuff in Hollywood, film, TV, movies, all of it. It's possible, and I'm so glad I waited. But if people want condoms, you know not every kid's going to listen. I think they should have to go through a sex ed, as in abstinence education first, and then ask the kid, why do you think you have to gauge his sex? And I can tell you it's because some celebrity or some adult abusing, promoting all of that graphic business. Tina, I wish we had much more time to talk about this, but we got to take a break. Stay with us. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. All right, we are back with Tina Griffin as we move on to our next story from Texas. Before we get into the headlines and talk about it, let's check this out. Watch. Klein ISD parents are reacting after a teacher at Klein Collins High School was accused of accidentally streaming a pornographic video to a school projector during one of his classes. The teacher has been identified as Kevin Welchel. An online forum for education reveals Welchel has worked as a teacher for 12 years and has been a world history professor for Klein Collins High School for the past four years. Klein ISD released a statement saying in part, the individual was immediately removed and is no longer employed by the district. The district does not tolerate such completely unacceptable conduct. I'm glad they took action on it. I mean, that's really good that they have a zero tolerance policy with that behavior. Welcher is now facing criminal charges for displaying harmful material to minors. Okay, so Tina, the headline, teacher, Texas teacher faces jail time for allegedly showing porn in class. First of all, uh, the kids can see, apparently, he some, something's hooked up to his computer and he was watching it and it got shown on the big screen. Um, you just, what are your thoughts off the top on this one? I have two major thoughts and I could not even write down fast enough. In fact, I wrote it so fast in a post-it note, I can't read it. But I, here, here's what I'm thinking. Number one, I might be facing jail time had my child been in that classroom when they saw that footage. Number two, here's my other major concern. 
I homeschool my kids, but the first thing that comes to my thought is if my kids are in that classroom and that teacher would show that footage, horrific. The teacher should be gone. This person needs help with his porn addiction. But my worry is, even if that pornography wasn't shown in class, what is that teacher thinking about regarding my student all day long, teaching the kids in class or molesting my child or thoughts that are pornographic in his brain while looking at my four children? No, no way, Jose, on this one. Well, listen to me now. I'm not pushing back at, at all. But uh, I don't know how long ago Dr. Duke started talking about anything you would do outside of school in the public, showing kids some sort of gender ideology or stuff that's in the textbooks that the kids are seeing. It's not hardcore porn, but it's soft porn, and you would be arrested if it was outside the school walls. So this Texas teacher is accused of showing porn. Yes, he did, but you know what about everybody else that does it? What about teachers that are talking about these things? They're I mean, it's, it's horrific what is allowed under the guise of sex education already. It, it's so horrendous. And the other thing is, let's say that teacher would have did a Bible study instead for 45 minutes. He would uh -oh. have been thrown in prison in these days. <laughs> what you happened? Yeah, right, no, I said, uh-oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, no, you can't I do that. that. Bible? No, 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 no. No Bible, no I, Jesus, no God. No. But, but here's what's crazy. That's not illegal. Even though they say separation of church and state, that is such a facade. So we've got a lot of lies going on right here, right now, but people are waking up. And I would, I think we need to have everyone go through some kind of lie detector test or some testing in schools today before they can teach our children, the future generation here of America, if they have any kind of major addiction and, and narrow it down. I mean, they're teaching our kids. Well, it's not even being addicted to it. It's just a matter of fact that this is just so normal that, uh, and by the way, it, it's, it's like you remove God, you remove the Ten Commandments, prayer and the Bible. That's a pretty big vacuum. Something has got to fill that void. And it's really not against the morality of the National Education Association, porn, right? It's not against their morality. So it's, it's no surprise. We're not he it's actually surprising we're not hearing more of these stories, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I have to actually literally read my brains on paper right now because I think this is so important. This is what God brought to mind when I was looking over this story. Parents were divided on what happened, and that's what my, my main concern, David. Some people are like, oh, don't let him go. We really liked him in the school. Other parents are like, are you kidding me? This is horrendous. This is a goal of the elites. This is exactly what the communists push on America in our schools. All of us have been talking about it. People are waking up. That's what they want. They want major division in America. It's easier for the nation to fall. And, and in order for our great reset to take place on the upcoming years, America is the last great nation that needs to fall. So together we stand, divided we fall. We have to stand together. And I think that the best, easiest thing for us to do is to raise the bar high and do whatever we can to protect our kids. Parents are going to teach what they want underneath the roof, but that doesn't mean that a couple of families in the classroom that want to teach their kids about pornography should have it imposed and teachers force that along the grounds of the entire classroom. When a majority in America, I believe, parents want their children protected and to learn about education. All this sex ed garbage shouldn't even be taught in schools today. It blows my mind, but that's what they want so yeah, they can yeah. destroy our nation. That's right. Communist right. policy, right? Normalize homosexuality and deviance and bring it into yes. the schools. Cultural Marxism on steroids. Anyway, we've yes. got to take another break, but we've got another sh same topic or similar subject, but another story coming up to discuss in just a minute. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company. Okay, we're going to Utah now, and <laughs> there's a course at a Utah college in Salt Lake City that lets the class watch porn together, and they're going to get credits for it. So moving on to the next story, this, this is almost just as disturbing. Now, this is at the university level, so 
you know, anybody and everybody can, you know, access porn. It doesn't matter. And it's almost like, hey, you're getting rewarded for it. Now you're getting college credits. Um, Tina, this is, it's, it's, again, it's not surprising. And let's just take a look real quick. Students pursue higher education to learn. I really don't think that it's that big of a deal. But this class at Westminster, with a direct name, porn, has drawn in the question of whether this is appropriate in higher education. I feel like a lot of my friends are super sex positive, and we talk about this stuff all the time. Some students I spoke to support the class for approaching the controversial topic to create a learning environment. And a certified sex addiction therapist also supports educational purposes. But, but she certainly wrote a description that carries the shock value that is very common in pornography. Here's how the course is described online. Quote, hardcore pornography is as American as apple pie and more popular than Sunday night football. It goes on to explain how they will analyze certain aspects of porn. You're watching pornographic films together. Male bodies and many female bodies will also respond to that. Okay, did you get that, Tina? Um, hardcore pornography is as American as apple pie. I gotta put my glasses on. It. Hardcore porn is even more popular than Sunday night football. It says our approach to this billion dollar industry is as both a cultural phenomenon that reflects and reinforces sexual inequalities, but holds the potential to challenge sexual and gender norms and as an art form that requires serious contemplation. We will watch pornographic films together and discuss the sexualization of race, class, and gender as an experimental, radical art form. So, and prerequisites, none, but you do get credit for it. Tina, I'm gonna let you just take this away. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for that, thanks a lot. Here are the <laughs> top things on Counterculture Mom's brain with this story. Number one, yes, American Apple Pie. What I thought was the movie American Pie. I actually lived in LA when that movie was shot. It's the first place my brain went. What mm. happened as a result? We got a skyrocketing number of STIs. I, I'm telling you, the other thing that they mention is you're going to learn a lot from these courses. Of course, how to learn to be a stripper. I don't understand why they are learning this at a college level. Do kids think and college students think, two steps ahead here, guys, because I am on your side. A lot of young people today when I go speak, they're, they don't know how else to think because they're only being thought and taught one main message. When you get out of college, what do young people want? A job, stability, someday get married, most, not all, be able to provide for their family. By taking a porn class now, all it's going to do is limit the number of spouses you can choose from that actually haven't slept with your best friend five years from now. <laughs> I, I talk to so many young people, someday I want to marry a great a wife. My parents have told me, pick a good one. Well, there's, do you mind if your future wife slept with three other guys on your football team? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we well, have to help these people think ahead, and I feel bad because they're learning to be strippers and not business entrepreneurs. Yeah. The, the modern university system, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the college takes a uh, discourse community approach in education, meaning that uh, students share their existing knowledge with their peers. So not only do they watch the porn, they talk about it, and they share their experiences with apparently radical sexual situations. But Tina, remember Rutgers University offered a class in fall of 2021, Gender and the Body, Representation, and pornography. So they've really got to study this to make sure they're whatever, sexually aware and woke and, and radicalized. But it really is sad. Wish we had more time. Tina, we've got to just wrap up in just a minute. Before we go, coming up next. All right, everyone, before we go, let's take a little time to fill you in on a few stories we've been talking about around here. Uh, we start with Netflix. The world's largest streaming service is picking up the woke torch by partnering with famed race monger Ibram X. Kendi. Now, Kendi, who leads Boston University's Center for Anti-Racist Research, will partner with Netflix to adapt three of his books to film. The books include Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America, Stamped, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You, <laughs> and Anti-racist, anti-racist baby. They sound like real blockbusters. 
Uh, no word how much money Kendi is being paid to push his race field nonsense, but he might want to get the money up front. Netflix just announced that they lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter, which many say is due to the platform going all in on woke programming, such as Colin Kaepernick's recent project, another series entitled Dear White People, and a new show just launched called He's Expecting. We can only imagine what that's about. Calling cancel, that's what I'm saying. Come on now, cancel the cancel culture. Yeah, cancel the corrupt culture and uh, man, the woke culture. So I agree on that. Boycott, boycott, we get that. So let's go on to the next sad story for our friends on the left. The most trusted name in news is abandoning their much touted streaming platform. Of course, we're talking about CNN. Uh, CNN Plus, the premium news subscription service headlined by former longtime Fox News anchor liberal uh, Chris Wallace, amassed only 150,000 subscribers in its first three weeks and averaged just 10,000 daily views at a cost of $6 a month. A global network that costs billions to run couldn't even hit a million dollars in their first month out of the gate. In fact, Mr. Potato Head himself even tweeted the demise of the streaming service, quote, CNN Plus, the streaming service that was hyped as one of the most significant developments in the history of CNN, will shut down on April 30, just one month after it launched. Somehow, we got to move on. So let's do that by wrapping up with a little controversy in the Marvel world, which, let me remind you, is owned by Walt Disney, or I should say Disney. A new trailer just released for Thor, Love and Thunder, has some diehard fans thinking the studio might be preparing to introduce a gay relationship for two Marvel heavyweights. Now, the teaser includes a clip that depicts Thor, played by Chris Hemsworth, looking lustfully into the eyes of Star-Lord, played by Chris Pratt. I'll let you be the judge. Take a look. Remember what I told you. You ever feel lost? Just look into the eyes of the people that you love. Not me. What? Just listening. Well, I think an argument could be made for a gay relationship, or at the very least, the illusion of one to sell tickets, particularly to draw in the LGBTQ plus 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 crowd. But the film is set to be released July. Uh, parents of young kids, be cautious of the direction Marvel is going. Thor is a popular character with the last two movies collectively making more than $1.5 billion. Tina, brace yourselves, friends. I can only guess what you're thinking. Go. You know what? I was in Hollywood for about a decade, a little over, and you couldn't pay me enough to even give the illusion of same-sex business going on here in our culture. So run from it, people. Plot of the enemy. The second major thing I want to let you guys know, I just went to the National Religious Broadcasters event here in Nashville, Tennessee, and my dear friends from Good Fight Ministries came out. We did a whole chat about this, but they actually pumped out a series exposing Marvel and the agenda behind Marvel. It absolutely is something that parents need to be, need to be aware about. Uh, we have to watch out for Marvel movies. It's sad but true of these days, and our main goal is to make sure we protect our kids. So check out Good Fight Ministries. They have a ton of great information about the Marvel series. And that wraps up this show. Tina Griffin, it was a pleasure sharing the stage with you, so to speak. You can connect with Tina, by the way counterculturemom.com. For all of us here at Freedom Project, I'm David Fiorazzo. Until next time, stay educated, my friends.